Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, it's going to be all about substitution for solving system of equations. Why should you use substitution instead of elimination? Well, sometimes the question is so perfectly set for substitution that if you try to use elimination, you'll be doing a lot more work. A perfect example of that is question number one. It says x equals y and 3x minus y equals 8. Well, that way you don't have to do a lot of work other than just plug in something here and you'll be able to solve the question quickly. Let me show you what to do. So first example, number one, it says that x is equal to y and the second equation says 3x minus y is equal to 8. Well, in this case, they already told you that x is the same thing as y. So instead of you writing y, you could plug in x. And instead of writing x, you could plug in y. Whichever you choose will lead you to the answer. So all we're going to do is just decide, well, which one do we want to get first? See, that's the second important question. Because if you replace y with x, it means the first variable you're going to solve for will be x. If you replace x with y, it means you're going to be getting y first. Well, because x already has a number multiplying it, why don't we just put x there instead of y? So since x and y are the same, I'm just going to plug in this. So I say substituting, substituting x for y in equation 2. So this is this is my abbreviation for equation, okay? In equation 2, this is equation 2, this is equation 1. So this is the equation. Instead of writing y, I'm going to write x because x is the same thing as y from the first equation. So I'm going to have 3x minus x, okay? I've replaced the y with the x because x is equal to y equals 8. So I have 3x minus x will be 2x equals 8. And I can divide both sides by 2. It gives me x is equal to 4. So once you get x is equal to 4, you can just um, know that y is the same thing as 4. Okay? Since x is equal to y, y is equal to 4 because x is equal to 4. So you have your answer. x equals 4 and y equals 4. So it's fast. Okay? Um, the problem would be that if you try to use elimination for this, you have to rewrite the first equation to look like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to, let's just say you try to use elimination to solve this. Let me use a different pen. You use elimination to solve this. It's going to look like this. You have to rewrite the first equation to look like this. x minus y equals 0. That will be your equation 1 because that's what this will become. And then you write 3x minus y is equal to 8. Then you decide which one to eliminate and then you go through the process of elimination. You still get your answer, but you've, you've taken one extra step beyond you just plugging in x for y and getting your answer straight. So sometimes the question tells you which method to use, elimination or substitution. Okay, so let's move on to the second example. So in this second example, I use this question when I taught elimination. Um, but we want to use substitution. So we have for number two, the question is x plus y equals 5 and x minus y equals 3. Well, you have to choose which of the equations you want. And what I recommend to my students is try and get rid of any of the equations. If there's one equation that has a negative like this, that's the one you should use. Just use it. Try and do it, um, because sometimes the negative sign tends to confuse students. But if you try to get rid of this, all you have to do 
is to move this to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. So this is equation two, this is equation one. So you say from equation two, equation two, I can move this to this side. I have x minus y equals three. If I add y to both sides, I'm going to end up with x being equal to 3 plus y. So I know that my x is 3 plus y. The first step to take is make sure that one of the variables is isolated completely. So as you can see, from this equation, I've been able to isolate x. Okay? From this equation, I've isolated x. It is this portion I'm going to plug back in in the other equation, not the same equation. So if you use equation 2, to isolate x, what you will substitute for will be that same x, but it will be in the second equation that you did not use. So please do not plug this back in here for x, because if you do, you're going to end up with um, infinite solutions. Okay, so you don't want to do that, because what you want to do is get the answer. You want to know what y will be. So remember, because you're substituting this for x now. That's where, that's where you must go because you got this from equation two. If you got this from equation one, you substitute in equation two. Don't forget that. That's a very important rule to follow. So now that we've uh, isolated this, I'm just gonna continue. So we say substituting three plus y for x in equation one. So we took this from equation two, we have to substitute in equation one. Now what is equation one? x plus y equals five. So x plus y equals five. What is our x? What we're substituting is three plus y. So instead of you writing x, you replace it with three plus y. So we have three plus y plus y now equals five. So we can open this up because there's nothing multiplying it. So we can go ahead and say 3 plus y plus y equals 5. 3 plus 2y equals 5. You can get rid of this 3 by subtracting it, subtracting it from both sides. If you do that, you'll be left with 2y equals 5 minus 3, which is equal to 2. So you have... Um, 2y equals 2, that leaves us with y equals 1. So, we have gotten the answer to the first part, y equals 1. Well, you don't need to do a lot of work to get x, because here we can see that x is 3 plus y. So you can, let's make a small box here to finish solving this. So you can say, since x equals 3 plus y, and we know that y equals 1, x will be equal to 3 plus 1, which is equal to 4. Therefore, x equals 4 and y equals 1. This is your final answer. Well, we can check, actually, and substitute these two values here. If x equals 4 and y equals 1, so this would be 4 plus 1 equals 5. 4 minus 1 equals 3. That's correct. Let's move on to the next question. So remember, my recommendation is that you don't do this. If they give you the option, you should use elimination for this method. But some questions will specifically tell you to use substitution. That's when you do this. But if you're given the choice to use any option, any method, you should use elimination. This will take you a much shorter time to solve. If you use, use elimination. So let's go to the very final one, this question. So this is the third and final uh, part of this video, and this is the third question. Which one should we isolate so we can substitute? This is my recommendation. There is, you can choose anything, okay? But my recommendation is to always look at, firstly, which of the variables am I expected to get first? Sometimes it's a multiple choice question and you can tell that if I only know what X is, 
then if you then I can easily guess what the answer is or if I only know what y is so whichever you're trying to solve for first is um, what should be in your substitution for example if you're trying to get x first then you should isolate y so that x is an, is part of your substitution if you however if there's no choice just pick anything that looks easy to you I always pick the the coefficient that is that has the smallest magnitude okay so if I know it's the two I just picked the two right now it looks like two is the smallest so I'm just trying going to I'm going to try and isolate y in this case okay so what I have is this is equation one this is equation two so I'll say from equation one I'm going to write it out 3x plus 2y equals 7. Well, if I take this, subtract this from both sides, I'll be left with 2y equals 7 minus 3x. Now, if I divide both sides by 2, I will have y equals 7 minus 3x, all divided by 2. This is what I'm going to be plugging in, in the other equation. Remember, you have isolated y. You're going to go here and put this here, not here, here, because you got this from here, you have to use the second equation and replace the y with this value. So let's see how that goes. So using equation two, if I use equation two, I'm gonna have four x plus three y. Instead of writing the y, this is what I'm gonna write. I'm gonna open a parenthesis, write seven minus three x, divided by 2, close the parenthesis, and my answer, so this is the equation, will be equal to 10. So my next task will be to open this up, okay, multiply 3 by 7, and multiply 3 by negative 3x. But don't forget, you still leave the 2 there. So let's see how that would go. So this will be 4x, to be 4x plus this is going to be 3 times 7, it's going to be 21, minus 3 times, 3 times 3x will be 9x. But it is still being divided by 2, don't forget. And your answer is 10. So the next step is to clear the fractions by multiplying each of the terms by the least common multiple. Remember that rule, we did that. So we multiply each of the terms by the least common multiple, and that gives us 2 multiplied by 4x plus 2 multiplied by 21 minus 9x over 2 equals 2 multiplied by 10. So if you do this multiplication, you have 8x plus, this takes this out this way, so what you're left with is 21 minus 9x, and 2 times 10 is 20. Now we can move this away from here, okay? And what you're left with will be 8x minus 9x. So you have 8x minus 9x equals 20 minus 21. So this gives you a negative x and this gives you a negative 1. So if negative x is negative 1, it tells you that x is 1, okay? Because if you divide both sides by negative 1, you can just infer it from what you see that if negative x is negative 1, x is 1, or you just say divide both sides by negative 1, and let's just do that. You're left with x equals 1. So now that x equals 1, we can proceed to do the substitution here and plug it back in here and see what our answer is. Let's do that quickly. So, uh, we knew that y, what we had was y equals um, 7 minus 3x over 2. So, we can plug that in. 7 minus 3 multiplied by x. What is x? 1 divided by 2. That would be 7 minus 3 times 1 is 3 divided by 2. 2. 7 minus 3 is 4, divided by 2, your answer will end up 
being 2. So x equals 1 and y equals 2. That's your answer. I hope you got that. If you go over this video over and over again, you will understand the steps. If you're confused, you're either making a computational um, mistake or you are not getting the steps or you're just your algebra probably had a problem. But that's basically all you have to know about substitution. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, share and subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. And I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning because those who stop learning. Stop living. God bless you. Bye-bye.